All right, guys. Well, good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? All good. Everybody doing good out there? <clears throat> All right. All right. All right. We're going to be quiet tonight, huh? <laughs> Hello. We're doing good. Hey, hey Shelly. Hey, hey, hey. Good to see your beautiful face. Yeah. Oh, yes. my Mr. Joe Lickens over there tonight with the scar. I know, I know. Like it, like it, like All it. All right. <laughs> oh. Hey, that's that's Joe's signature over there, y'all. Yeah, he, he be fly all the time. All the time. Uh, I'm he seeing, fly. I'm oh, seeing him in person, Cheryl. <laughs> yeah, but, that's and, all right. Yeah, that's all right. right. He, hey, he been like that for thirty some years. Hey, <laughs> he, has, he has not changed a bit with that. He really, dress thirty some years. He been like that. Yeah, <laughs> consistency. <laughs> always looking nice. Always looking good. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna get ready. Gonna to make, yeah, gonna make. We're gonna do what, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> we gonna do what? Make you blush over there? You gonna make me blush over here? <laughs> he, he know we telling the truth on him over uh -huh. there. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I am excited to be back with you again on tonight. It seemed like it's been a minute since I've been here, but I know that I have been working in other veins and you know trying to get the ministry up and moving. You know, um, as it has been in times past and. You know, God has really been doing some wonderful things, and you know, I hope we all get a get to kind of cross up with each other eventually because our uh, marriage ministry has gotten kicked off, and and we've got the future wives that are invited to join in with the class with us as well. So they kind of they kind we kind of double dip it a little bit. So anytime y'all feel like you want to join in, you know, you could do that. And I think sometimes the married people need to drop in on the single sometimes as well. So. But um, I'm excited about this month's topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about femininity versus masculinity. Uh, we hit a lot of this in the uh, singles, I mean, the merit class on last night. Uh, but I wanted to tr bring just a little bit of a, a different twist uh, to the <laughs> singles class on tonight and kind of, kind of, kind of get us get our thoughts moving in a direction and. <laughs> you know, help us to kind of think through some of these processes because, you know, oftentimes we find ourselves when we're, you know, in that pursuit of, you know, possibly, um, you know, finding that mate that we want or whatever. Um, sometimes we're hitting and missing at a lot of things and we don't always, uh, you know, know what the right approach is. And oftentimes it's good to find people that will come in and kind of get us on the straight and narrow with things if nothing else, just to get you to start thinking about, you know, what it is that you've been doing, you know, how's that working for you? If it ain't working for you, why are you still doing that? <laughs> and is this, is this really the direction that you want to go in? And if not, when are you going to take the, 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 the bold approach uh, to, or uh, to uh, step up and do something different so that you can receive something different. And I think tonight is going to, Really, really get us in a, a motion to where we really, really start thinking about things from a different uh, perspective. So I hope you guys are ready and I want some class participation. Y'all been showing out since I've been gone now. So don't y'all do me wrong tonight and don't come with that class participation. <laughs> but uh, y'all have been doing a fantastic job and I, I really love it. I love the way things are moving. So uh, Mr. Joe, if you don't mind opening us up with a word of prayer, uh, we'll kind of get kick started out tonight. I'm trying to fill my space in here tonight, so we'll let you know bring prayer in, and hopefully, God will get us all settled into a place. Thank you. I think you're muted, Joe. <laughs> oh, it. Oh, okay. You hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Joe. Okay. Father, Father, we come, we come, we come into this place. We come into a place. We move into the room with you. We come into this place of oneness. We come into this place with open minds and open hearts. 
And when we have open minds and open heart, joy blossoms. I heard that quote the other day and I was just kind of taken aback about it. But I understand that when we do this and do everything that we do, not unto man, not unto a job, but unto you, Lord. When we do that, we do it with a spirit of excellence and we do it with a spirit of thankfulness. So these are another blessing we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I want to stop for a moment and say welcome to everybody and everybody that's joining in with us. And um, I really appreciate seeing all your faces. Now, those of you that would like to open up your cameras, uh, feel free to <laughs> do that. And, you know, let's see if we can't see some beautiful faces. I know it's, it's, it's Thursday evening and we're <laughs> almost at the end of the week and everybody's tired a little bit. But remember, this is our special night on Thursday nights where we as a singles come together and and kind of talk about some stuff, kind of let our hair down and everything. And uh, But if you decide that you don't want to open up your mic, I do understand. Uh, just go over to our chat box and you can always comment uh, via the chat box. You can always, you know, raise your hand or, you know, whatever. You can always say, Mary, Miss Mary, you got to stop right there. Back up. We got to talk about some stuff right there. So whatever it is that you <laughs> need to do to get the conversations moving, uh, we definitely want to do that. Uh, before we get moving with anything, it looks like we've got our guest that's going to be joining in with us on next week, Mr. Andrew Roman, who is Mrs. Shelley Roman's brother. Uh, he oh. is on the line with us, and we're glad to have him joining in with us. Uh, can't wait to hear the conversation uh, as uh, all of our guests will join in uh, for this particular month, uh, because it's good to hear different perspectives. Uh, Y'all are going to hear uh, probably the, the feminine side of things on tonight. It doesn't make it right or wrong, but it just to let you guys <laughs> know how we think as women. And hopefully when Mr. Roman comes in, he gets to bring in a different flavor to it. And uh, he gets to put the women, you know, in they, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. Uh, we also have Mrs. Camille Bill that's here with us tonight. She is the host facilitator for our um, for our uh, married group, and uh, we're glad to see Mrs. Camille in the house with us tonight. So uh, we're going to grow and learn together. Uh, well, one of the first things I want to uh, kind of uh, go over, just to let you guys know why um, I decided to, you know, make this as our, our theme for the month of October, that femininity versus masculinity, is um, as I shared before, a lot of times as we are in, on our pursuit uh, toward happiness, toward, you know, uh, finding that particular mate, you know, that we'd like to have in our lives. Um, I do believe that at the core of who we are, uh, there is a certain uh, um, flavor to it. I guess that's the way I'll put it. There's a certain <laughs> flavor to it. Uh, we all got different flavors. I think according to how we have been um, reared in life, uh, what's important to us, what our beliefs are, um, you know, what, what, you know, you, you're able to tolerate, I often use the word uh, that you need to have the grace for whatever relationship that you're going to be mm -hmm. in, because whereas I may be able to deal with somebody that drinks or uh, somebody that curses or whatever, somebody else may not have the grace for that. And, uh, and then also maybe, you know, I may not have the grace for someone that has children and then another person does have the grace for that. Uh, you got to be true to your own self about things and, uh, and, and be able to verbalize those things and not uh, kind of sweep things up under the rug and make it look like this is what I want. Because be, to be honest, people know authentic when they see it and they know accountability right. when they see it. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, it shows up later on uh, because sometimes the pursuit is to get the person. And then when you get the person, it's like, you can't be letting them see all your goods at the very beginning. But once you get into it, you start thinking that, oh, I saw those red flags a long time ago and I didn't really speak up about it. But now that we are up close and personal with each other, each other on a more regular basis, the flags are kind of popping off all the time. And now I'm not quite sure if I really want that. So I want to kind of start off before I jump into this conversation, just to kind of hear from you guys and 
And when it comes down to femininity versus masculinity, mainly your feminine side versus his masculine side, what are some of the things that you look for in a relationship? You know, you're, you're in a space right now where you can be honest and open. You, you, you may not have that person in your life right now. So you can come from your heart and share. What is it that you really, really want? From from a from a man, I'll start with Joe and Mr. Andrew. Mr. Andrew, wants to <laughs> we'll let the men go first. And uh, what is it that guys look for when it comes down to femininity within a woman, a uh, Joe or Mr. Rome? No, oh, Mr. Rome, not go after you. Let's see it again. See there. He's here, but he may not be ready to speak just okay. yet, Joe. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, pose the question again, uh, Marilyn. I'm sorry. That's okay. When it comes down to femininity versus masculinity, come down to relationships. We all have different values of things, mm -hmm. and we all have perceptions of how we see different things and how we want a relationship to be and what actually attracts you. When it comes down to the feminine side of a woman, what is the what is the main attractor to you when it comes down to femininity? Uh, to me, um, a lot of it is to see the open heart of that person. It, it, it's it's to uh, to kind of observe how she ha carries herself in a group of people and how she moves to her own self. And, and in that, confident in who she is, not trying to be this and that to no one else, just being herself. And, and in that, it has a certain humble awe about it. You know, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. And you can spot both. And, and I think, to me, as I've matured or got older, those attributes are more important um, than a lot of other things because I guess I'm talking about the heart and, and, and what dwells there and what comes out of there. And, and it comes out not just in a language, it comes out in a movement. You know, it, it's, it's a thing where, you know, there's an or, there's an or there, and it's a confident or that you can see. And it's obvious, and that person is, is is like what you were saying. The authenticity is there. There's no fakeness there, because they have a heart for other people. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, that that's kind of to me. And 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 being feminine in that, and all I mean is, you know, not being so much, you being a woman, not have those girly attributes. Uh, you know, and, and confident in the person and present themselves as a woman, confident, loving, kind, um, kind of like the fruit of the spirit, I guess you would say. All of those incumbent in that person and they are authentic. It's not nothing fake about that. I that, love you it. Know, I guess Joe, I'm going heard, somewhere with that. <laughs> Joe, I heard you say something. You said... You said at the age you're at now, but what about when you were younger? What were you looking for back then when it came down to femininity? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you I mean, if you don't mind going about, back a minute, <laughs> I know going back. It was all about the you know the physical the look. It yep. was all about she's cuter this and that, and then you know it it was more of the physical attraction, all that other stuff. Where it wasn't. Um, that important because yeah. you're at that place, you know, of uh, just attraction, you know, and and and, and you at, at a place too, you just there, and, yeah. and that's what you can see because again, you haven't come into the real person and you probably weren't as spiritually grounded. I mean, you where you are in this world, you probably, I probably said back, like, oh, I'll get with God later. You know, and, and, and <laughs> yeah. prior to said that, you know, I get I get that stuff later when I get older. And you know, that's and you your mindset is totally different. Totally different. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that, Joe. A lot of times, you know, before we come into that spiritual side of life, you know, we, we ain't think about all that other stuff. As a matter of fact, if they too spiritual, I'm trying to get away from them to be honest. Because, you know, they probably yeah. ain't giving up the good. They probably ain't giving up the good nah. over there. If they're, too <laughs> <laughs> if they're too spiritual over there. So. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's amazing how, you know, in those in those early pursuits in life, you know, we don't always, you know, uh, uh uh, we haven't gone through enough. I think that's what it is, mm -hmm. Joe. And right. we don't always see life as, you know, as as important as it is now. Now that right. our kids have gotten older, we start thinking about, you know, um, you know, we got to bring somebody that's going to be, you know, positive, positive role model around the kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't want anything that's dragging us off of our purpose, off of our course, you that's know, right. all of that. So it makes us really think about things just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> there's, something to, there's something to think about. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Andrew, what about you? If you're willing to comment with us tonight, what are your thoughts on that? How did you see masculinity? Yeah, I'm, I'm hello, everyone. Good night. Uh, I was trying to tell my sister, I apologize. I did hear you mention my name earlier. Uh, I'm at the dinner table eating with everyone and I had the volume low. And so I got <laughs> my sister's like, she's asking something I'm like, man, I missed it. So I apologize about that. <laughs> um, but I'm in my office now, uh, just kind of uh, listening in. If you don't mind repeating the question and indulge me for a second. Okay. Uh, okay. And I apologize for interrupting your meal over no, there. No, but... not Oh, I, I wanted to jump on and kind of get the get a feel for the vibe and the flow. Um, but like I said, I just didn't hear, uh, you know, That's okay. being correctly. So, yeah, but go ahead. That's okay. Well, we're talking tonight about femininity versus, versus masculinity. And we're letting the guys kind of go first to tell us, you know, uh, what are their thoughts when it comes down to uh, femininity, when it comes down to you know, choosing a maid or if it comes down to dating or becoming attracted to someone, you know, because we all see things from different points of view and the women want to know what is it that the men are looking at? What are they looking for? So uh, I've come to Joe, ask Joe what femininity looks like to him. So I want to ask you the same thing. What does it look like to you? What does it look like in your eyes? Okay, well, that's a, a good question. Good way to start. Um, I, I think femininity, obviously, and you'll hear a diverse, um, different types of answers, obviously, from different people. But femininity, to me, it speaks to the way that God created a woman. Uh, again, this is my opinion. It's, it's some based on biblical and others just wisdom uh, over the years. I'm, I'm 45 years old. I'll be 46 soon. Um, God willing. And yeah, so, so for me, when it comes to uh, femininity, um, I go back to the Bible and I go back to where it all began um, and, you know, what Eve did and how Eve presented herself and how God viewed women. And so if you look at today's vernacular, women can be strong. Right. And there's a difference between strength and masculinity. I want to be masculine because I'm a man. Right. I don't choose to be feminine. Right. Because I'm not a feminine person. And so when I look at the, the softness or the sophistication of a woman, I see a woman as as the, the buffer. All right. You guys get your nails done. Right. And, you know, when you get your nails mm -hmm. done, uh, you know, there's different levels of of the and I'm going to say this all wrong. I, I have six sisters. So I, you, you think I should know this. Right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you, you you get the your nail buffed out and there's different levels of a buffer you know one is the the first level is a little coarse right so that takes off a, a lot of it then as it, it gets to a point where you're starting to like it right it, it, the, you get the shiner part right and you buff it all out until it looks really good so the femininity or the the feminine energy of a woman comes to make things in its best possible place right you're the buffer that takes the hard things, the callous things, the tough things, and you make things work, you make things right. So mm -hmm. when you correlate that to a woman who is loud or a woman that is, you know, uh, from, from what we would say, uh, you know, just, just very masculine, that's, that's the difference I feel with, with femininity. You could be strong, you could be assertive, you could be tough, but I feel like it, you are the buffer Right. You're the buffer that comes in to smooth things out. So if you're not smoothing something out, 
then you're you're to me you're doing the contrary thing right you're now causing chaos you're now doing things that's a little different like mm. be the buffer and and that's the, yeah. the way that that women women from the bible and just in general were created to be like chaos could be in the earth right but 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 the femininity and the softness should come in and kind of smooth things out so whenever i see women in situation where they're aggressive and it's it's loud a they're not winning right it's not a victory for them uh because they're not using their truest power but if if they took their truest power and and realized that it's in the buffering of a, of a situation I believe that they have more victory as a woman. Um, God's pleased, right? And now heaven's smiling. And I think God just adds more to that person. So it's just a matter of using your your energy in the right direction. Yeah, I love that, Andrew. Uh, I love That's the great. analogy of the of the buffer. You know, if you know, sometimes we have to get those visual aids and. You know, and if you think about it, when you go in there, it does, it looks a little rough at first. And, and sometimes we as women and men uh, sometimes come off a little rough in life. I think it has a lot to mm -hmm. do with, you know, our backgrounds, because a lot of times, you know, we, we all come from situations or whatever the case may be, but it really does take a person uh, bringing those things to light to us, you know, to let us know, hey, this is not the finished product of this. You know, there's another stage to this to where we come in and, you know, make that thing shiny. And, you know, you got to mm -hmm. know where your place is. And and though, you know, you may use that word strength, you got to remember we look are strong. We're looking at it as, you know, being in your proper place. So it's not mm -hmm. always trying to have that masculine side to That's things. Right. And and I think it does like it like uh, uh, Andrew said, I think it creates a harmony within the relationship. And the man really stops to, stops to say, I think she's a valuable asset. I think I want to keep her over there. So great, totally. one, great one. <laughs> great. Yes. Great. Miss Shelley, I see your hand up as well. Yes, ma'am. You know, I had to jump in because my big brother just put the put the, the stank on it just now. <laughs> Listen, I when he was talking and he was describing um, uh, femininity in his eyes, the first thing that came up and I and I swear, you know, I wanted to talk about this earlier. Katanji Jackson. That was the first femininity um, that came to my mind. I watched this thing, this woman go through her confirmation today and, and throughout the, the, the um, yes. her confirmation. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was describing, that femininity. She was, mm -hmm. throughout the entire process, that woman sat there soft, yeah. quiet, not mm -hmm. loud, not right. braggadocious, not right. you know overpowering. And even when people were describing her mm -hmm. um, throughout her tenure, it was just all those, those qualities were, were being talked about her. She was a Christian. She carried herself even to the point where the opposite side said she was too soft on crime or she's too soft because she's a woman. At the end of the day, she has one of the highest powers. Um, now she's got the highest powers in the land and yet she carries herself as a woman. That's right. So that lets us know that not only is heaven smiling like my brother was saying, because she throughout her entire process, throughout her career, um, as a mother, as a woman, she carried herself in a feminine way. Mm -hmm. Yes, she could have went, she could go into court and be aggressive, be loud, be, you know, uh, manly and do all those things. But she knew the assignment and she yeah, knew what she right. was created for. She was created to be a woman. But right. as a buffer, as, as my brother was saying, as a leader, she can be, she can be all those things. We all can be all those things, but we do not have to walk around you know, being mannish about mm -hmm. it. We don't have to walk mm -hmm. around carrying the weight of the man because we're not built that. We're not built for that. That's and so right. when right. he was describing that, that's the first thing that came to my mind was that's a perfect example that that we should try to, you know, try to follow, try to emulate, but that's, but we are designed to be soft. We are designed to be, you know, uh, the buffer. We're not designed to have everything on our shoulders. And I think that's where, when I hear, oh, we're a strong black woman. Yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. That's all, you know, I'm all for that but there's a way of doing it. And, and so yeah. mm -hmm. I think that that's what he was, you know, that's the example that I thought that he was talking about is just the, the softness of it all. We, we're women, we're built that way. That's right. 
Yeah, I, I love that, Shelly. And um, it makes me think about, you know, uh, many times, you know, you use that word or that phrase, you know, know the assignment, you know, that's before mm -hmm. you. And sometimes when there is a, a lack of identity or a lack mm -hmm. of um, a knowingness of who we are, we have a tendency to jump in and out of character. You know, we, mm -hmm. we will jump that's to this right. and we'll jump to that. And that is a sign that we are uh, lost on our journey somewhere, yes, you know, right. and I think it kind of takes us into uncharted territories or it takes us into familiar territories of maybe what we have seen in times past, but not necessarily the best route to take in life. That's right. Um, anybody else want to kind of take a shot at that? You know, what femininity looks like to you? Because I know the men are through, but what, what about what about masculinity? We'll take a couple of people on that one. What does masculinity look like to you from a woman's perspective? Anybody? <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll start it off again. This I'm is, <laughs> <laughs> I told you when you when you when you told me what the topic was, this is gonna be good. Yeah, I yes. Uh, masculine for me is listen. You you got to be able to use your hands. You got to be able to use your hands. Um, you, you know, uh, know how to to pay a bill on time. <laughs> you just have to. You have to. You know, be strong. Take you know take the lead. Um, make good decisions and think things through just manly things you know fix a car can you pay you know can you do things with your hands i think that's you know if you go back again like my brother said to, to adam and eve adam was in the in the garden you know he wasn't just sitting there playing around god that's had him right. working right so mm -hmm. that's the design of a man so if you don't know how to work if you don't know how to use your hands if you don't know how to do anything at all like that and i've met men that way and that's the sad thing about it is we have a lot of men in this in our country, especially in our community, that just sit back and play games all day, and That's they right. don't work and they don't do things. They think that we owe them something, mm -hmm. you know. They think somebody owes them something somewhere that that is supposed to just pop out of you know thin air. So, for me, a man needs to be able to use his hands. He has to make decisions, be able to make decisions, and stand firm on his decisions, um, and uh, you know, just be able to lead and, and be a, a strong leader. But that's, again, that's the design. That's that's a part of his design. So his innate design needs to be able to be, you know, up front. That's my, you know, that's what I think. <laughs> Man, I mean, I love that. Anybody mm -hmm. else want to take a shot at it? Great one, Shelly. I'll take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Robin. Hey, hey Robin. <laughs> All right. So uh, for the first phrase that came to my mind was a gentle giant um that's good one who is strong i mean physically but mostly in character and um confident in knowing who they are but gentle at the same time gentle and kind and to me that that's that's part of being manly or masculine and then I wrote, um, yeah, confident, not arrogant. And somebody that I would be willing to submit to. Mm -hmm. Someone that I, and I know this is, talk, you know, I, we're talking about masculinity, but I, I believe a masculine person is someone, a man, excuse me, is someone that I would be willing to as a woman, whether he's my husband or my employer, or, you know, just somebody that I'm willing to submit to because he respects me. Mm -hmm. as a woman as a human being um and that's why I said not arrogant and not like uh what's I can't think of that word where they just feel like because they're men they're superior you know, right but not you know we're on equal footing but knowing his position yeah as a man that's yeah. good uh, when I hear when I hear Robin saying that uh it reminds me when the when the uh scripture talks about treating her as the weaker vessel, you know, because uh, that's what she, that's what she is. She's not weak, but she's the weaker vessel uh, right. of the two of you. And, you know, that's another thing with a man knowing his place, uh, even, you know, in life, you know, that you don't have to prove 
um, that you are a man or, mm -hmm. you know, be overbearing. I heard her say a gentle giant, you know, you don't have to, you know, try to shove a woman around or push her around or anything like that, because we already know uh, that that's, that's that, that strong suit within you, you know, but a woman wants to know that she's not going to be treated, you know, like a rock or something like that, but be treated as a softer one, you know, mm -hmm. with the relationship. Good. Uh, anybody else? We'll take, we'll take another one. Anybody else? <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, masculinity from a woman's perspective? I'll, I'll, I'll go. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Um, hey, Cheryl. I'm a Sherry. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so my take on it, the biggest thing or the big, biggest trait or attribute that I feel like a, a, mas a masculine man would have is to be honest. To be honest from the you know be from the beginning because honesty is where a lot of um, in the presence of a masculine man is just a man that can be honest, decisive, a uh, leader, a protector, a provider, um, being able to um, dominate his own life. You know whether that be his career. Um, his finances, his spirituality, all those different things. So I think that a masculine man or masculinity exudes those things where um, you can be strong, but you also have emotional intelligence where, like you know, you're not always in your feelings, you know, but you're able to have feelings and feel, but you're, right. you're able to control those things. Right. So that, that's my, my take. And that's something that I value to be able to see in a masculine man is to be honest and have, you know, some self-control and um, emotional intelligence, but also be able to lead and protect and be decisive and mm -hmm. have provision and vision as well. Yeah. When, when Sheree, when I hear you saying that, I, I hear military. I hear a man that they would be proud to have in the military, somebody that's going to have some emotional intelligence that will, you know, not jump the gun or, you know, do something that's going to bring detriment to the rest of the baton or the group or whatever, you know, it, he, he has that balance within his life and not just within the family life, but also thinking about those that are around you having a caring heart and, you know, mm -hmm. just being mindful of others out there. So that's good. That's good. Anybody else? Yeah, I have something. Yes, Latoya, yes, ma'am. Okay, so I feel like it should be someone who like treat me with respect or treat a woman with respect and be considerate of their feelings as a woman. And also, um, you know, some men have, you know, they have a problem with saying I'm sorry. And I feel like that's a, like a big thing. You know what I'm saying? If you, if, if you know you're wrong or if y'all come to, you know, uh, uh, agreement or uh, argument or whatever. And you, at the end of the day, you know, well, I was wrong with that. You know, say I'm sorry. But some mm -hmm. men have a problem with that. And I feel like that's like a big thing for me, too. Yeah, that's good, Tori. That sounds like that gentle giant that uh, Robin was talking about, you know. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not having that pride, uh, you know, mm -hmm. because... Uh, pride has a tendency to tear families down. And uh, I've, I've been right. stuck on this scripture in the Bible where it talks about uh, that anger uh, lies in the heart of a fool, in the bosom of a fool. Right. And none of us want to be connected to foolishness out there. And a lot of times when we see behaviors that are, um, you know, um, you know, that are not uh, conducive for wholesome a wholesome relationship or you know just growth or whatever you know it has a tendency to turn us off a little bit you know and sometimes people don't understand you know why uh maybe the women chose not you ch may not have chosen that particular man to stay with or whatever and then sometimes the the woman may feel you know what was it that that you know caused him not to stay with me you know i think we need to really stop and think about the energy that we're throwing off and uh, what it is that we are really, really wanting to produce, which, which causes us to really get our focus together and, you know, get our thoughts together. 
it kind of goes back to the beginning when we started the singles class. Y'all remember when we talked about, uh, I think it was in the Songs of Solomon when he said, um, uh, don't go after love too quick. Yeah. Don't go after love too quick. You know, uh, settle your hearts down and uh, stop and take a look at some things in life and find out what it is that you, you know, really want. Uh, I want to kind of uh, kind of call off just a few things and and uh, we're gonna I'm, I want to go into a little something with you guys tonight. But when we think about masculinity and some of the traits of it, you know, I want us all to stop and think, you know, do do I possess some of these characters or some of these traits? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes we could be throwing off an of energy and don't realize we're throwing off that energy. And, you know, it causes for different forms of correction. So one of the things that I think of when it comes down to traits and characteristics that represent, represent divine masculinity is they take action. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that it, it's all about order. It's about taking action. Um, they're very decisive about things. You know, they are problem solvers. Uh, there's an assertiveness that comes with a man. Mm -hmm. I think it's a part of the assurance within them, you know. Another thing is physical force. They're strong for a reason, you know. God created, you know, them like that. Uh, they are decision makers, you know. Uh, for instance, if, you know, we, I don't know about y'all, but every now and then, you know, if I, if I am asked to go out on a date, you know, I don't always want him to ask me, you know, where do you want to go? I want him to be decisive to say, hey, I'm coming to pick you up at seven o'clock. I got this nice restaurant I want to take you to. I think you would really, really like it. And I think that's just a part mm -hmm. of allowing them to take the lead with things and being able to be a decision maker. You know, I, I don't I don't want to always be in a position to where I have to make the decisions in the household or in the relationship. I do want some input in it, but I do want to know that he can make decisions without, well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? Or what do you think? Another one is this leadership mm -hmm. side, <laughs> traits and characteristics. I want to know that he is a leader, you know, mm -hmm. and that he's respected. Right. I've always had this thing about a man being respected in the community, you know, to where he's looked up to, not just in the community, but also with his family, you know, uh, taking that lead when, you know, something goes on, if he's got sisters, you know, I wanna know how quick are you to, you know, come to the aid of your sisters because you know, they're gonna need you if something uh, takes place with their car, especially if they're not married, you know, if something takes place with their car, Will they have to call a mechanic to come and do it? Or can they call you to come and do that, you know, to help out with things? And to me, that's what leadership kind of represents to me. Uh, the next one is protection. Mm -hmm. You know, them being a protector in life, you know. Uh, one of the things that I loved about my brothers growing up were those boys, you could tell that they had grew up in a masculine household. My brothers because they were protectors to the T for all of us girls. And I, I remember when uh, my brother and I got to, got to be in high school only one year together, one of my brothers did. And every day, Sam found his way over to me to make sure I had lunch money. He found his way over to me to make sure, Marilyn, you get into your classes like you should. He made sure to show up somewhere to make sure nobody was not bothering me. So I've never, never worried about, you know, having to watch my back with different things because I've always had those male protectors around me. So I look for men that were always protectors because that's where I felt safe at. I never mm -hmm. found myself, you know, just being with somebody I didn't feel like they were safe or whatever. Another one is they are logical thinkers and reason, reasoning. You know, it's kind of like we talked about in the Dream Builders class this morning, that left side and that right side of the brain. Those that are left side, they normally are that, are, they have those, um, the, the characteristics of one that thinks things through. They're very logical about things, you know, they're problem solvers, all of that. That's that logical thinking. And sometimes that may bring in a quiet nature within them. You know, because sometimes you have to stop and think about what is going to be the best approach to it. You know, not to sweep it up under the rug, but what's going to be the best approach to it. 
Another one is achieving, being goal oriented and providing. So I wanna stop and take a moment just to allow us to kind of talk about that a little bit before we go into our real session tonight. What are your thoughts on that? If you were to choose one or two of those words when it came down to masculinity or that trait that stands out to you and you would like to have someone in your life you know, that covered you like that, ladies, what would it be? What, what, what would be at the forefront of your decision to say, he's a good cover? That's the one I want right there. Anybody? I was, um, do you have the word attentive in there? Um, no, I didn't have the word attentive, but that is a good one. Because that to me, um, protective or a protector, attentive, I yeah. think I would add to just, yeah, they would have to be attentive, I think. And, and Robin, that's even uh, what, what I found is attention, attentive to details. Mm -hmm. That means they listen to you. Yes. They can literally come back and repeat to you what yes. we talked about yesterday. Yeah. And what decision we say and what you, you know, what were the things that you thought that's attractive to me. Yes. When I find somebody that's very attentive like that, it's like, I don't have to remember everything. They help to remember things. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> Ladies, let's put our thinking hats on. What do you, what do you, what, what's, I mean, what's at the top of your list there? <laughs> and the thing oh, about I, I like when you said, oh, someone's going. No, go, go ahead, Shelly. I was going to say, I'll shut up. <laughs> um, goal orientate, goal orienting and provider. Um, those are my, my top two. And it's only because of my, my upbringing. That's what I saw. You know, my father um, had a successful business. Yeah. And so he was a, a great provider. Um, All right, good, Shelly. Anybody else? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Hey. Okay. Yeah, I say um, I say protector, a provider. Um, he has goals and ambition. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like it. Good. Uh, Mrs. Katamara, she said decisiveness, provision, and protection. Mm -hmm. I think we all can agree we want those protectors in our lives. That's that's good. That's good. Well, let's let's flip over to the feminine side of things and let's see. Well, let's go back a little bit. When it came <laughs> down to masculinity, because ladies, I want us to check ourselves uh, to make sure we're not throwing off an energy that um, deflates a relationship or causes uh, that that masculine energy not to be attracted to us because we are already feeling the spots over there. If there were any of these words that were spoken out that you find yourself already having to take control of and you would like to let go of it, which one would it be? Mm -hmm. Because women, they often admit that they've been walking in some masculinity for a while for a lot of yeah. reasons. Yeah. And if you had your choice to let go of some of it, what would it be? Well, Marilyn, I think <laughs> I would let go of decision maker. Being the decision maker would be number one. <laughs> and um, yeah, I would love to let that go. <laughs> I could say here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that would be like my my number one um, trait that I would want to um, let go of. Good one, Faye. Okay. Anybody else? Shelly said making the decision. Anybody else? Latoya, were you getting ready to say something? Oh, I think she had a mic open a few minutes ago. Um, the decision. Okay, decision. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I would say always having to get things done and taking the action, being the initiator. Assertiveness, being, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's good. 
Anybody else, you just want to get rid of some of this stuff. I Listen, I got too much uh, uh, estrogen going on over here in this particular <laughs> area. And I can, give, I can give some of that away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the decisiveness or excuse me. Yeah, that that decisions and problem solving. Oh, yes, that's a good one. <laughs> I think I was going to I was going to say initiator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because we um we always have to either initiate something to happen or to get something fixed. We always have to be the initiator. And if we don't initiate, nor normally a problem will happen if you see a problem. If you don't go and fix it or try to get that maintenance on whatever, if you keep letting it go, it's gonna be a problem. And then right. you're, gonna want, you're gonna want somebody to step in and take over. <laughs> take <laughs> that decision right <laughs> but yeah that's one <laughs> that's good that's good faith all right let's go over to the over to the feminine side of things uh these are the main traits and characteristics of feminine feminine energy uh gentleness kindness they are heart-centered creative intuitive mm -hmm. acceptance Receiving, emotional, communicators. They're compassionate and they have empathy. Let's kind of talk about that. We'll let Joe take the lead on this one here. <laughs> you know, if there were any of the, the, the traits, and I know you called off a lot of them earlier, which ones would be probably your top two or three, Joe? Compassion, compassionate, and empathy. Um, yes, I think those just to care for others and not just in the sense of saying it, but in your action. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's almost like it's no hesitation. You know, you, 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 when something happens, you own that. You, I mean, without no recourse without no hesitation. It's just part of who you become, mm -hmm. that attribute you, you have that. And it's, it's not only, I, I won't say it's, um, um, well, I think it just comes from the heart. I just think it comes from the heart, yeah. And, and Joe, that sounds a little bit like, um, got my back. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You got my back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the I'm going to be the provider. I'm gonna be the protector in the home. But if you see things slipping, your empathy says, you know, just step in. Yes. Don't don't just let things fall apart. Don't let even me fall apart. That's right. But just step in in some places. You, that's that's the person. That's the person that when my back is turned. They still see for me. I like that. You know what I'm saying? They, they're not, you see a freight train coming. I don't see it, but you do. And you say, no, 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 no. Let's go here. Because yeah. they see something you, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's like what you said. That's a person that's got your back. And mm -hmm. how do you know? Because they do it over and over. Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. You just know, yeah. Yeah, ladies, what do y'all think about that? How many of you find yourself uh, that that you see those characters as feminine characters within yourself, or do you see some of that missing from you? See it in myself. I do. Um, and I think those are um, characteristics that, I mean, as women, I think some of us have it in us because we we are life givers, you know, as far as we are mothers, you know, and we have that inside of us to have that empathy and that compassion. You know? mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. I see, I see it in myself now um, as I got, you know, I get older, I see some of these attributes, but when I was younger, oh my gosh, I was very aggressive, very loud, very mm -hmm. mannish, I guess. So um, I think as I got older, 
got more involved in, in, in the Bible and the definition of a woman. Um, def- just, just seeing, you know, what God thinks a woman should be. I started to learn now how to be quiet, how mm-hmm. to empathize, like Joe was saying, how to be compassionate. Um, even when I don't want to be, even when mm-hmm. it's to people that have hurt me, mm-hmm. I've learned how to still stay in that vein, still stay in that compassionate yes. state, still stay in that empathy. It's become my new normal. That's yeah. right. And 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 so you just have to take it, you know, and 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 know that God will have your back as a single woman. You don't have a man right now to have your back. So for me, I don't let things bother me as I as they used to. Right. So I just allow God to cover me, like Joe was saying, He's got my back, so I'm gonna have his and I'm just gonna be soft about it. Oh, you did something wrong to me. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. God bless you anyway. That's right. And, and so now it's just a normal walk for me, but mm-hmm. it took time, you know? So yes, I used to be very, very aggressive, but now just like I said, with age and with, you know, with wisdom, with, with learning mm-hmm. more about how, um, I, you know, I want to be feminine. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a man. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. You know, That's I right. don't want to be a man. That's right. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. Um, anybody else? Just your thoughts on it. We're just kind of pulling our thoughts out around this. Hello. So I would say, come here, cousin. I, um, for me, I, I'm just now learning to embrace my empathetic side. I know that Oh, you're fine. I know that as very at very bit at a very young age, I rem- I can recall always looking out for other people because um, it was something that I desired, and so for a very long time, I did not embrace that part of me. I mm-hmm. I despised that I loved to that degree or that I cared that much for other people because sometimes it was not reciprocated. And sometimes it, it was caring or being empathetic to a fault. Um, now, as I am learning and I have grown, as Shelly said, with wisdom and with age comes um, mm-hmm. discernment. I'm learning now that that's just the gift that God gave me and not and to embrace it um, because that love and that, that covering and that caring and that empathy and that compassion for other people is something that that makes people gravitate to me yes. and once i once i get more keen in my discernment of who to allow in my space then i will receive the same thing that i'm getting um yes. but it, it wasn't until a certain age maybe maybe even a couple of years ago that i started to embrace the fact and enjoy the fact that i was that caring or that empathetic or that that I cared that much about other people, whether I knew them or I didn't know them. That's good. That's good, Katamara. I think it's like uh, that awakening taking place with all of us and, you know, just coming to a point of realizing that, um, you know, maybe, maybe the energy we get back wasn't what we really wanted. And it really makes us start thinking about, you know, um, your consequences, you know, there are there are consequences to our actions, you know, all yes. the time. And, and, and I, I think about the Bible when it talks about, you know, uh, sometimes the Lord will, uh, will bless, he will bless your neighbor just to provoke you to jealousy. Yes. He'll provoke you to jealousy with things. And sometimes you're looking out the window at others and, you know, wondering, you know, well, how did they get ahead of me? Or how did they, you know, whatever. I know we're not <laughs> supposed to be doing that, but sometimes God will allow us to see other people um, uh, succeeding in things. And, mm-hmm. you know, it makes us start think about, you know, I need to think about my life and the direction that I want to go in because I don't want to be alone forever, especially those of us that don't want to be alone forever. We have to start thinking about those things. Um, there, there is a word that I often use is polarity uh, when it comes down to femininity versus masculinity. Uh, there's a place where you have to know when to turn what on and what off, uh, because there are some times where there is like what Joe said, you know, with the empathy, uh, where he knows he is the man, but oftentimes if something happens and maybe 
you know, maybe it's a loss of a mother, a loss of a family member, and I'm not at my best right now. You know, that mate comes in uh, with that polarity to come in to say, you know what, I can be strong right now where you're weak at. You know, I don't come in to take your place and I know it's going to take a minute. That means, you know, let me take the phone calls. Let me handle some of the stuff around the house, little things like that until you can get strong enough to get back into the position that you're going to be in without you worrying about things falling apart by the time you get back in place, you That's know. Right. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, I think that's what single parents have looked at. They, they've looked at, we just want somebody to come in that can help keep the balls rolling and not allow things to be falling apart, you know, until we can switch these roles over in some kind of way. And I think that this comes with our relationship coaching a lot of times that we have to understand polarity and what we bring to the table, what needs to be turned on and what turned off and, you know, different things like that. That means there has to be a place of, of um, um, I don't want to just use that word emotional intelligence. Uh, I don't want to use that too much, but I think we do have to have a level of intelligence or emotional awareness within us to understand that we are in a relationship. And a relationship that is, um, that's not a one-sided thing. That's right. You know, we were hoping that we're looking at covenant relationships, one that's going in the direction that God wants us to go in. And we have to look at them a lot different than we have looked at before. Um, how many of you have felt a little strange uh, when you had to sometimes step in another position when there was a male or a female in your life and it didn't seem like it was bringing balance and maybe it brought on an emotion uh, that you really didn't want to turn on, you know, but it happened because things happen in life. So are you, you want to talk about that a little bit, Latoya? Yeah, <laughs> um, I guess with just, Things like when I had a, when I was with someone, then I felt like things that should have been taken care of that I shouldn't have had to take care of, which I didn't mind taking care of. But I feel like if he's here or you know, I feel like he should have took care of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I've been single for a long time, so I'm thinking, okay, well now I can let him kind of do some of the things that I would had to do for so long. And then when that didn't happen or, you know, something, then I, I kind of felt some type of way, basically. Yeah. I like that. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about that tonight, too. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I, I was going to ask her. Mr. Joe? Well, yeah. those are some of the things that. Hmm? Go ahead, Joe. I was going to ask her, were those some of the things that in her mind that a man should know what to do? Yes. Okay. okay. I felt that way. Like he should, like I shouldn't have to say that being he is the man, but right. then, I kind of, then I think about it, I was like, well, you know, maybe, and not saying all, um, let me see how I can say this without being rude. But not all men sometimes have a father figure <laughs> <laughs> to like explain and show them. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm not being rude or nothing, but I'm just being real. Right. So, yeah. No, no, no. Uh -uh. And I've kind of like think like, well, maybe that has something to do with it. You know, when I mean, you just look overall, because not just with him, but just overall with some of the men. I've you know, heard my friends talking about that and stuff like that, and I just kind of wonder. Did that play a big part in it? I think, yeah. and this is just my personal opinion with that. I think uh, during the dating stage, uh, we talked about that in here, uh, that we collect data. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of your relationship, that's all you're doing is collecting data. And you're making a decision later on as to whether this is somebody that you want to you know, uh, continue the pursuit with, you know, to go into maybe a next level with the relationship or whatever the case may be, especially before you start bringing them around your mm -hmm. kids, around your parents, all of that. I think you do have to go through those various phases. 
And there are things that I think that um, you, you, I, I personally would say, um, be true to yourself and know what it is that you are looking for, right. you know, so that you are not six, seven, nine months into the relationship. And not that you didn't see it at the beginning. It's just that it's bothering you now. Mm -hmm. You saw it, you saw the flags, but now it's bothering you that they're not doing that, you know, because I think sometimes we as women, uh, we do have a tendency to uh, provide um, allies for men to say, well, maybe they didn't have a father figure in their lives and, mm -hmm. you know, all of these mm -hmm. kinds of things. But I don't think that it stops them from being what God has created them to be. I think sometimes right. they have to pursue that a little bit more. If yes. you didn't have a father yeah. figure in your life, uh, there are a lot of mentors that are out there. There are pastors, right. there are leaders, all of that. And if you know that that is not a man that you can respect down the line, that's not somewhere you want to hang your hat at. That's right. Because eventually, you know, all of that, it, it causes you, you, it causes you to stir up your masculinity. Mm -hmm. because the relationship is out of order and when in essence you could have chosen to stay in your femininity you know to say in order for me to be the gentler side to this you know I, I want a gentle man uh, but I, I need a gentle giant you know somebody right. that can stand up and being honest about what it is that you you know desire and not get to the point to where I think Camille mentioned this last night calling up your girlfriends and telling your girlfriends about what he ain't doing and, you know, how bad he is and all those kind of things. <laughs> when by the time you start right. telling your girlfriend, right. that means you've been sitting in it for a while. And yes, that's sir. something that has yeah. to be, you know, kind of noted beforehand. Any comment, any mm -hmm. thoughts around that, guys? It, you know, um, that's some good points, Marilyn. I was just thinking about that because, you know, some men haven't had that experience of how to be a man, you know, in a uh, family or see the role or might not have been exposed or have leaders and mentors. But when I feel like when um, a man or a woman, when they feel inadequate or mm -hmm. when they, feel like they don't have the skill in order to do a certain thing, they could be a transparent enough to say, hey, I really want to do this, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to get the information or I'm going to learn how to do that. I'll look at YouTube and, you know, how to think, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'll look it up and, mm -hmm. and inquire about it or read some self-help books of how to build my, you know, if it's your personality characteristics, whatever that need is to fulfill that void of what's needed. I think we have so many resources out there that we can, you know, pull on to. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, right. I agree with Faith. I really believe that uh, we as women, as we are taking our, our seats back in feminine, because remember, we want to give some of that stuff away. We mm. want to get rid of that <laughs> masculine energy. Yeah. And with that comes responsibility uh, to be patient. And because it's going to take a minute for you to get that off of you in order to start attracting what you really need, because as long as you're in the masculine role, you probably going to attract feminine people. Right. Because opposites attract. Yeah. Opposites work. You're probably not going to attract a masculine man unless he's a fighter. Mm -hmm. think, think about it. Because when they, you put those two masculine poles together. Ain't no friction going with that except for fight. Right. It's only when you bring feminine and 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 masculine together. Right, right. That you don't get the right spark off. It's kind of like the jumper cables on a cable on, on your on a battery on your car. You can't put two negative pieces together. You're not gonna get any fire. The only That's time right. you're gonna get fire is when you put that negative and that positive <laughs> on that pole. <laughs> Yeah. You're going to start getting some, some action from that. So if you are walking in your, your, your masculine energy a lot, and you say that I, I want a man that's masculine, and you masculine too, guess what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Y'all going to be quick to fight. Yeah, that's right. 
That's right. It, it ain't nothing for you to call him a nigga. <laughs> nigga, please. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Yeah. Yes, think about, just think about yeah, it. Because you, true. you're operating in that masculine energy. Yes, you are. That's what the, that's what the guys do over there. They, they slap around and do all the kind yeah. of stuff. Now, I ain't gave my masculinity away just yet. Because I got to protect that. Because I got to take care of myself. But when you meet someone that you say you want someone that has masculinity, but you over there holding the bar to him too, <laughs> what you gonna do when he come in? He got a seat to take. So the only person that's gonna fit you is who? Mm -hmm. and Somebody I think, I think it's a defense true. mechanism as well. <laughs> you know, what a mm -hmm. defense mechanism mm -hmm. yeah. that we will, mm -hmm. you know, we will pull up what we know. <laughs> you know, yeah. so we have to relinquish that you know and kind of that's a trigger yeah. <laughs> and we talk mm -hmm. about triggers you know and and know how to manage it and how yeah. to reverse you know reverse mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it takes time to do it, it yeah. takes, go ahead Shelly I see Shelly want to jump in <laughs> no because when you were talking about the bubble <laughs> and stuff I um I, re I remember the other day my car wouldn't start I was in the shopping center and my car wouldn't start and it wouldn't it I mean, I got Geico. I could have easily just picked up my phone and just dialed for, for them to come out and, you know, jumpstart or do whatever they need to do. But when I when I stood in front of my car, I popped the hood and I'm just looking. When I tell you three men just came out of nowhere and they just, I mean, they were just ready to be men. They were like, you need help? Let me start it. And they just, I mean, they got to work. They were just in my car, jumping it did everything the car started fine then they started telling me what to do when i call the dealership what to tell them you know so they don't take advantage of me men want to be men we yes. just have to let them be men That's we right. have to yeah. be women mm -hmm. yes we can cook mm -hmm. the bacon probably kill the pig and do all of that <laughs> but <laughs> we have to allow <laughs> them to do it that's what they're there for it's in them so mm -hmm. when we walk around and we start making excuses for them, oh, he didn't have a father figure. I get that. That's fine. But we're talking about the natural thing that's in them. It is mm -hmm. in them. It's not something that a father can put in them. It's already there. Yeah. They need to be providers. They are meant for that. They are meant to use their hands. They're meant to help us to, you know, to do so. So for me, I, when I saw that, and then Marilyn talked about it just now, that's where that came from. I was like, that's what it is. Yeah. These men, mm -hmm. they just want to be men. They just want to help. They want to be there for us. But we have to just realize to back off, to let that, let them do that. Allow them the, the opportunity to do that. You mm -hmm. know, the young lady was saying that, you know, she, she didn't want her, her friend or whatever, you know, she didn't want him to, like he wasn't making decisions on his own or he wasn't, you know, you know, doing it. That, that's when we as women will drop these little clue bombs. You know, you put a little, you know, little post-it note to do something to kind of trigger him a little bit, but mm -hmm. not just do it. Not just go, well, I'll just do it. I'll just say, no, it's, it's, we have to allow them. It's in them. And that's what we're like, my brother was saying, we're the buffer. We kind of give them a little bit, trying to help them out. Hey, babe, why don't, why don't we try this? Or, hey, babe, remember that time you was, you, you know, just, Whatever mm -hmm. it takes, but to, to just allow them, they want to do it. They they are meant to do it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to know. pull on, to pull on when when you see that there is a um area of weakness within them, uh, that's not for you to go and do it. That's for you to pull more of your feminine side where there's gentleness, you know, where there's creativity. There's a lot of things, not mm -hmm. to necessarily go do the job for them, but pull yeah. on what God has given you as a natural instinct on the inside that will cue them that, oh, she needs my help. Amen. That's, right. That's it. She needs, that she needs my help. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let, let's talk about this a little bit tonight. I want to talk about um, their, their kind of 10 little tips or top things that I think about. Uh, that will help us to maintain relationships when it comes down to uh, both that, that feminine and that masculine side of it. And it's going to give both a male and a female perspective on it to have us to start thinking about things. So we think about number one, 
when we're looking at relationships, you know, you want to think about men have to set aside their ego, okay, in relationships, because sometimes that ego can bring in too much of a, um, a masculine energy. I think that's where um, uh, someone was mentioning uh, them apologizing, saying, I'm sorry when you make say I'm sorry. Uh, it was that, you know, having that self-control, different things like that. But a lot of times when we have uh, a, ma a man has too much ego that's there, mm -hmm. it doesn't always leave room for femininity to come in because it's almost like it really doesn't matter what you do. Uh, we mm -hmm. kind of call them narcissists sometimes, and it kind of throws the energy off uh, within the relationship. And um and I think sometimes uh, we have to uh, find balance in that, especially if you find, you know, if, if a man finds a woman that he really desires. And ladies, you can kind of think about this, too. You meet a man, uh, seems like he's, he's very high on the testosterone over there, but he finds you to be very attractive in, in your femininity, not in your looks, not in any of that. And you seem to be a keeper to him. And one of the things, if there is a lot of ego that's being thrown off, that's one of the first things that he's probably going to check. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to, I think um, someone said it may have been Faith said or whatever, sometimes asking or, or saying that, you know, um, that's not an area that I'm strong in, you know, um, you know, but I noticed that you you fix a lot of things. I'm not used to doing that. You know, and, and what you want to do is, you know, kind of reverse that energy and kind of let them know how you go about doing what you're doing. You know, it may be something as simple as, you know, as a woman, I, I haven't really had the finances to call out, call people to the house all the time, you know, someone to fix all these things. So I learned to go on YouTube, you know, or how to, how to you know, do different things. I, I remember when we, we moved in the house here. And uh, our hot water, it was when that big storm came uh, last year and our hot water heater went, I mean, the fire went out on it. And, you know, we had some friends come over and they were having a hard time uh, trying to figure out how to light that thing. And within me, um, I used to work at a factory. That's kind of like a masculine side of it that kicked back in real quickly. And I went straight to YouTube. I found out the style of the hot water heater. I went and figured out all of that. And I followed it step by step by step by step on how to get that going. And I just so happened to have one of my girlfriend's husband that was here while it was going on. He's not full of ego. And he said, Marilyn, he said, let me see how you're doing that. You know, whatever. And he shows that he does have a feminine side to him. We, meaning he's willing to learn if there is a place that, you know, you can teach me something or whatever, we're willing mm -hmm. to do that. But a lot of times if the ego is up too high, uh, it's going to be like, well, you can't tell me nothing. And it throws That's the right. energy off because a woman is not really attracted to a man uh, whose ego is too high, you mm -hmm. know, or uh, does not have uh, that, you know, um, bandwidth to make her feel like she's a part of it. Um, you have you all have any thoughts around that or what do, what do you think, ladies? You know, I commend you for doing that, Marilyn, because I, I'm just saying I'm one that would probably pick up the phone and call someone to do that where maybe I could have saved me some money. Mm -hmm. Because for me, when problems happen like that, like mechanical stuff or car stuff or house stuff. If it, I have anxiety about this stuff, yeah. it, it, I mean, mm -hmm. and maybe it's because my father was always there to mm -hmm. fix it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. he was always there to take care of it. And I think that um, if we don't, you know, take that masculine side sometimes, especially when you're in a situation like I am and you are a single, sometimes we have to, you know, we have to take the lead on those things that might be uncomfortable to us 
and just, you know, ask God to give us the wisdom, <laughs> you That's know, right. to do it because we get taken advantage of, you know, right. in certain situations. They'll charge us more than they would charge Mr. Joe, you know, to do something that we're, I'm ignorant in and, and say, well, maybe that's a good price. You know, maybe I don't go mm -hmm. and get a three estimates before I say, okay, you do it. I just trust, say, oh, you're a man. I trust you. You, you know, you're giving me the right information. So I, I commend you for doing that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think probably uh, I grew up as a tomboy too. So it, it makes a little bit of a difference, you know, to where um, th that's probably not my I guess it wouldn't be my first thing to do fake of me. I'm, I'm like faith. I'd rather pay somebody to come and do it. But I was like, but it's a hot water heater. <laughs> I can yeah. go to YouTube and find how to go about doing that. And, and what I'm saying is if you find a man that's not, you that, that that's too strong in his ego and it's like, you can't tell me nothing, but he don't know how to fix the water, water, hot water heater either. It's like, these are some things that we can learn from one another. So mm -hmm. these are some traits that I think that, um, you know, you want to kind of, you know, pull down or whatever, and then not make, you know, um, you know, don't, don't make a person feel bad about what they don't do. And I wouldn't make a face feel bad about mm -hmm. her not wanting to go over there and touch that water, how water heater either. Had I not been working at Carrier and been a tomboy all of my life, I probably wouldn't have touched it either, you know? Yeah. But so that's why I say some of it is a part yeah. of our makeup different things like that. Mrs. Anita, I think I saw your mic open just a minute ago. Or someone. <laughs> was someone trying to comment just a minute ago? Mrs. Anita, was that you? No, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any thoughts around? Mrs. Camille Bill, what do you think about that? Ms. Camille, you may be a little tired of with the baby. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, Cheryl, come on. Yes, ma'am. You know, I was gonna say that I meet men who are masculine. Um, they're initiators, they take charge, they fix things. Um, they're thoughtful and considerate in those, in the, in that manner, they always lack the emotional currency. You know, the, yeah, it's, it's, it's the emotional, um, I'm always missing the emotional um, availability mm. at some kind of level. It's, and it will ruin the relationship. My last relationship, um, you know, a retired military guy. So he's very organized. He's very mm -hmm. take charge. He was old school, gonna court you. You know, we were, he lived in another state, you know, so we were always back and forth and seeing one another, but he planned everything. You know, it was like, I'm not gonna invite you up and we just hang out around the house. So he'd find cool things to do. Like in all of those areas, he was great. Um, I never wanted for anything but emotional availability. Yeah. And I had to make a choice to leave the relationship because he felt like, because he was great in all of those other areas, mm -hmm. that I should just be okay with what he mm -hmm. has to give. Mm. Now, when I mm -hmm. say taken care of, I mean like when he came here, uh, you know, house full of groceries, emergency cash, my car's checked on, filled up. But he that emotional availability? And that Chef. is what I attract. Yeah, Go ahead. I was going to say, Cheryl, can you, add, can you, like, what's an example of the emotional availability? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, mm -hmm. like what do you want him to do? Um, oh gosh, um, he's not invested in my world unless okay. it's him and I together. 
So whatever we do together, whatever we hang out together, but he's not invested in the things that are important to me that has nothing to do with him. Like fans. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, not the way that I, you know, as a, as a woman, we were very serious def- to talking about marriage very seriously. Um, as a woman, you love your man, you know who his friends are, who his work people are, who was church people. You, There's not a person that he could talk about that I didn't know who he was talking about. But I would also follow through like, oh, your goddaughter, how was the baby shower that you went to? Or, oh, you said you were going this with your daughter. Like, how did that go? You know, that kind of follow up. If I told mm. him what was going on in my life, that was the end of the conversation. Mm. There was no follow up. Yeah. And so I would be looking for him to say, well, how did that work situation go? Or you had to do that presentation, that little text that right. said, baby, you got this. That's and call good. me when you get done, I want to know. Yes. But yeah. if I told him about it, he has an attentive ear, but he's not invested in the things that has nothing to do with him and I. And mm. it became a battle, a huge mm. battle. Mm. But because he does all of the other things, he didn't, you know, he felt like that was being unreasonable. But I'm like, you mm. in, enjoy and appreciate that I know you can call me and tell me anything. And I know exactly who you're talking about or that I care about what's going on in your life. But when you don't care about what's going on, and I'm not saying like in a cold way, but it begins to feel kind of strange when- One-sided. Mm-hmm. When it's one-sided like that. Um, so I get the men that do every, this is the most romantic man, the money, the fixing the cars, the taking care, all that, that dude is easy. But for him to be emotionally available about, and you to feel safe about it, right? you know, that it's not that he doesn't feel like you're making him be too emotional. So I would like a man who is masculine enough to be sensitive, you know, to be, to, to nurture me, you Um, know, mm -hmm. to, to listen, to, to be concerned, to encourage, like, to be that. I got all of that when I was with them. I got all of that when I talked to him. He's always available. I can always reach him. And if he ain't available, he gonna text me and say, hey, I'm on the phone with such and such. I'm gonna call you back. But it's that one little piece that over time I started feeling very lonely yeah. in the relationship, even though I probably had the best time of my life with this man and I couldn't get him to compromise. And so it started to begin to feel personal or that mm-hmm. maybe you don't want all of me. You just want a part of me. Yeah. I didn't know what to think about it. I stayed with him for almost two years. Mm-hmm. I broke up. And of course, he's always trying to get me back. That's a whole nother conversation. But <laughs> I all I stand my ground. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe you, know you don't know how to do this. And maybe that's not real comfortable with you. And I'm willing to be patient as long as I see you trying mm-hmm. to make an effort to learn. I, you know, I said, you mm-hmm. could put on your calendar to remind yourself to say something to me and I'd be excited about it. You know what I mean? Try to do something. <laughs> right. you know yeah. what I'm and it was just yeah. like, I, I do everything. Like I, mm-hmm. I go above and beyond for you. So why are you tripping about this one little space? Mm-hmm. So anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. I've made it very clear that if he don't give me what I need, there's nothing <laughs> up and, and we ain't together anymore. But mm-hmm. I run into that same kind of guy. Give me anything in the world but the emotional currency. Well, we're gonna check. We're gonna check to see where the common denominator is at. Uh-huh. I, I was going to ask one question. Go ahead, John. Um, excuse me, Mel. That's okay. I was going to ask, Sherry. Do you think it was his military background? I don't know. Okay. I do. 
I, I do. Married to one. <laughs> I, I grew up in America. <laughs> they're un- oh my yeah, god! They, they're very <laughs> insensitive people. Mm-hmm. They don't have no emotions, not at all. Not them. Oh, so I just wasted my time. No, no, oh because there was there's no there's no compromise. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, 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 that, that's that goes back to the beginning of our conversation when we talked about uh, you. You have to be. You have to. You have to have the grace for certain things, mm-hmm. and everybody doesn't have the grace for a military man. You know, especially mm-hmm. if you know you're real girly and you like attention, different things like that, and they don't have the emotional capacity or they don't have the bandwidth for things like that. You can either choose to be provided for or be happy. Mm-hmm. That's the so now that now that you say that, <laughs> I think that in comparison to the women that he's probably had in his mm-hmm. life, I had more of a life. That's you know, right. I have a mm-hmm. career. You know, I, I do go. things. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. there's more for him to be involved with versus if I look at the women he was previously with mm-hmm. in no shade. Yeah. Right. They right, didn't have right. as robust of a life as I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and normally Cheryl, what were, you, let, let, time, let's, yeah. we're gonna let uh, Mrs. Faith and then Mrs. Shelley. I think they had something to say on that. Then we're gonna move to the next one here. You know, sometimes um their women might be um they don't have a world. So mm-hmm. so they want men want the they woman do. to be their world. And when, since you're a strong woman, you, you know who you are, you have your own thing, it might make him feel insecure. So he might, he might not want to tap in into what you, you're doing because you're creative. You know, he might not be, see, when military, they're like this, you know, they all in the box, you know what I'm saying? And when you break the box, because you're creative, you go outside the box and they're in the box and mm. it's either black or white, black or white, but it's yeah. no in between, it's black or white. And so you might have made him feel insecure when you express, you know, what you want, your creativity, what you do outside of his world. And he doesn't know how to deal with that. Yeah, that goes back to that ego. You know, right. we yeah. have to learn how to <laughs> yeah, set that yeah, ego yeah. aside. Yeah. Yeah. If you really want a relationship, sometimes relationships are not as important to some people want compatibility. They're not that's necessarily right. looking for a relationship. And it's yeah. the difference between the two. Companionship, mm-hmm. that's the word that that's I want right. to use. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily looking for a relationship. They just want companionship. And if you're not just trying to be a companion, Check that emotional part. And when they check that emotional, that's probably not mm-hmm. what they're looking for in the relationship. Nah. Michelle, mm-hmm. did you have something before we go to the next one? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, when she answered that question that he's not, you know, no follow up and um, he's not invested and in, in stuff, um, it brings me back to my, my sister and my, my brother in law. They've been married for about 32 years. They're both retired military. I mean, they're you know all they know is military they don't know anything else and I remember asking her what was the secret of their long marriage and 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 being in the military together and she said the same thing that Cheryl was saying um my my her husband he don't care nothing about what what's going on with our family he just he's like you know (laughs) he just if 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 my if if it's my son's birthday or if it's you know whatever the case is, it, he's just not that type of guy. He's just not into everybody's business or, you know, she'll be like, he, you know, he'll say, what's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. I'm gonna call my sister because she said everyone should have a buffer person in their marriage or someone in their marriage that they can go to for the thing that their husband can't give them. Not cheating wise. I'm just saying like, if you know your husband's not good at this, you should mm-hmm. have a backup. You should have someone else that can take care of that part for you. Because if you say this man has all these great qualities and it's just this one quality that he doesn't have, maybe having someone else that you can go to for that, that part 
um, you know, and eventually he'll come around because eventually her husband does say, hey, isn't it time for us to go to your mom's for her birthday? <laughs> It'll eventually, you know, he eventually starts being that emotional person. Mm -hmm. But until that comes naturally or until he's able to do that on his own, if you know that this is the one thing that he's not comfortable with or he's not good at, find mm -hmm. that other person, find your sister, your brother, your cousin, your, be your best friend, someone else to, to, to give you that emotional availability that you're looking for. So that way he sees you leaning on that person long enough, it's gonna, it's gonna make him come out of his shell as well. And say, so, well, you always with so-and-so, are you always calling her? Well, <laughs> so that's what came to my mind when you were saying that, like, that's not just like my sister, like, oh, Darren, he okay not about that. And I'm like, but he should, I mean, that's, that's our family, he should care. She's like, he don't care nothing about that. Yeah. You know, but then she'll say, eventually he'll call and be like, listen, um, last year, this time we was at your mother's house. Is, is, are we supposed to go over there? <laughs> you know, is it he her birthday? He's trying to get a handle the game this time. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So she, she took the bitter with the sweet. Sometimes you take the bitter with the sweet, but you know, again, like Marilyn was saying, if it's not something that you're willing to, you know, deal with, that's fine too. But yeah. if it's something that you can find that buffer person or find that extra buddy to, to release whatever that you, you know, that you can have until they come around, you know, that's also, that's also compromise with the relationship as well. So. Good. So let, let's go to the next one. We're going to talk about the women now a little bit. Um, one thing that you find as uh, tips or, or rules to maintain relationship is understanding that women are more feminine and soft and not trying to control situations or different scenes. They don't try to make a man do anything. That, that feminine woman, she doesn't try to make a man do anything. She will, and, and listen at this, a woman will only be feminine when more masculine energy shows up. I'll say that again. A real woman that's that's comfortable in her femininity will not try to control a situation or a scene or try to make a man do something. What she's going to do, she's going to find that she's going to realize that she's only she will only be feminine when more masculinity shows up. She's confident in who she is. And it's like. Mm -hmm. You're not going to keep exerting a lot of that energy, uh, especially when you're in the beginning stages of dating someone, you still collecting data. And so it's like a natural instinct for a woman is to look for somebody that has a little bit more masculinity. And it's what we talk about. He's assertive. He takes control. He's a decision maker. You know, he knows how to protect. He knows how to provide all of that. So a lot of times, when you find, just say, for instance, if a man's ego is very high and he feels like, you know, I hang out in the gym all the time and I'm all buff and I'm all built up and I got a fat pocket, all those kinds of things. But you're you're lacking some of that emotional energy where Cheryl was talking about when this woman is confident in herself, she's going to look for more for a man. Though she loves the muscle, though she loves the money, she's gonna look for a man that has more of a, a more of a masculine uh, a sound to that because she don't want a man always in the mirror all the time. That's you know, true. looking at himself all the time <laughs> and not not you know not you know complimenting her different things like that. She's not gonna try to make him do anything. I, I think that in our younger years of, you know, because we're still trying to figure out what it is that we want. We're constantly trying to get them to do this. It's kind of like what Tanya was saying, or even the ladies that mentioned on the line last night, you know, you know, they were talking about, you can't make them, you can't, you can't um, uh, train a man to be a man or anything like that. You know, I, I think that when you are confident in who you are, you're not going to be over there fussing at him because he's not taking out the trash. You're not doing all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. In your early stages, you start looking for things like that. If that's not something that you're willing to, um, you know, deal with or whatever, most of the time you're going to keep looking. And on another side, 
most of the time, if a woman does stay there with the man that has that type of, uh, that she has to do those kind of things with, she's not going to respect him. Mm -mm. She's not going to give him the respect because it's something missing, but she may not be able to tell him what it is that's missing. So a woman that's confident in herself, she's not even going to go in those doors and begin to start opening up those doors. Because I, I because really, at the center of my heart is that you become the best that you can be. And if being with me is not bringing out the best in you, you have to, you got to save your feminine energy for something that's able to receive that. That's Does anybody right. have any thoughts around that? Yeah, that makes sense. And th these may be tough things to think about, but we're we're trying to become, like Solomon said, he's on wake up love before time. Mm -hmm. And we got to start thinking about the attributes of femininity. You know, I have the softer side. I'm kind, I, I'm gentle. And when I find someone that I got to keep making you do something, it starts bringing out too much masculine energy and I have mm -hmm. to jump out of my spot too much and it makes me uncomfortable. It makes me start saying things that I shouldn't be saying. It makes me disrespect, the, you know, may possibly, you know, start to disrespect the relationship. And eventually what will happen is my eyes will begin to start going in another direction. Mm -hmm. It's just like a male. They do the same thing. If they find a, a, a woman that's not, uh, of that uh, feminine value that they have. Um, maybe she's too loud or maybe she's got just a, you know, too much of a, too loud of a personality, whatever. A lot of times what he will do, he will do the same thing. He starts looking for something different, something that fits the personality of who he is. Would you agree with that, Joe? Oh, yeah, I think so. Because like you say, you know, after a while, it's draining. I mean, you know, you it's like you can be tired from work, but draining affects your spirit. Mm -hmm. It takes you, you know, you was talking one time how relationships don't, can pull a person down. Mm -hmm. it, don't, it don't have, they pull you down to a place and all of a sudden resentment sets in. That's right. And then you start to say things out of your character because they, you know, gave all these heads, you know, now we're trying to pull him into something that he don't want to be pulled into. Yeah. Because if he really wanted, I mean, to change, that has to come from within that person. Even an egotistical person, I mean, they always set themselves superior and above. And that's 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 the thing right there trying to change that no you don't change them you eventually change yourself into something you try to figure out who am i now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you have allowed that energy to to change the true you or change you into something you don't really like you don't really like yourself anymore and you like wow i can't you know i can't do this no more because it, 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 I don't know if they, did I allow it? Uh, however you got there, you got there. But you don't like the person in the mirror anymore. You don't? Mm -mm. It's almost like the worst betrayal you can ever do is to betray yourself. Betray yourself. Betray yourself is the worst thing you can ever do. Yeah. It's not the betrayal from them. It's a betrayal of yourself. And How that, many of you, you can, can honestly say that you found yourself doing that before? <laughs> you were constantly trying to get them to do something that, like Joe said, they really didn't want to do. And then eventually resentment starts setting mm -hmm. up, not on one part, but on both parts. But y'all stuck in there for whatever mm -hmm. reason. And now the whole energy in the house has changed. Not it's even it's like it's you're a couple anymore, <laughs> Joe. Miss Miss Faith, yes, ma'am. Well, you tend to start manipulating each other. Oh, you better say it, Faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
and you start being <laughs> puppets. One string pulls the other string, and, and then you end up, and you're like, "Who am I?" That's right. What, what, after several years, what? Who have I become? And mm -hmm. how? And have I let my emotions to either want to please, be too too pleasing, or not having enough? You know, change me into. Um, you know, just wanting and wanting and wanting and just pull, you know, like Joe was saying, drain, just drain the person, you know, to the point where, you know, they don't even want to be bothered with you <laughs> because <laughs> they know you always coming for, for something all the time, mm -hmm. instead of you being, you know, you handle some of your stuff yourself and stop pulling on me for every little thing. Everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else on that? Y'all thinking out there? Why are y'all so quiet? <laughs> you know, some of us sitting in the middle of this stuff. In our homes, and our relationships. And we're wondering how we got there and, and what we're going to do about it. Yeah, it's hard when you get into relationships like that. It's hard to get out of them. You get into you get in it, and then all of a sudden, you don't even want to go to the family reunion no more. No. You don't want to fake it no more. You know, it's like, um, where Johnny at? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> he was an hour I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> the really say I don't care. It's like it wasn't necessarily this situation, mm -hmm. but when you get to that point where you feel like you're dying inside, that's ooh, right. That's that ooh, you yes. Feel, you feel like if you, God, if you you don't know, help me get out of this, I feel like I'm gonna suffocate. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it takes over your whole whole aura mm -hmm. you know of who you are mm -hmm. and it's almost like you got to run away it's like i'm going i don't know what you all gonna do but i'm going to find me right. <laughs> you know, i'm gonna go get back to where i should have been you know and yeah. and that's really uh, ooh, that's a bad yeah. i've been there before yeah. and, and, I, and mm -hmm. it was a long journey it was scary yeah. yeah, it was stepping out in the unknown, and I mean, going from the known to an unknown situation. Unknown. You don't know what that other side because you depended on that stuff before. Mm -hmm. You know, you going out in out in the deep and taking those faith walks, and you're like, look, you know, I don't want to sink, but that was your safety net. That was your comfort right. zone. That was where you knew how to work the situation. You know how we know how to work stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can make it happen, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. That's yeah. true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Next thing, um, we talk about the men this time a little bit more. <clears throat> and we talked about how um, men are not emotional. They're not as emotional. I'm not saying they don't have emotions, but they're not as emotional with us. So men will normally limit um, their arguing. And, and most of the time when they know who they are, they're, they're not going to come into argument with us because they're not overly emotional about things. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't argue with women. That matter of fact, they stop women when they want to start arguing and cut that off. And yeah. you do it in a gentle way. Yeah. You know, and as a matter of fact, women really want a man to take charge like that. Yep. If I've gone too far or whatever, and you hear me going into that mode, women really want to see a man, let's just be honest, we'll put her in her place. Yeah. To not slap her around. No. Nah. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Put her in her place. We're not doing, we're not going to do that. We're not going to argue mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're ready to sit down, have a conversation about it, we can do that. 
And that kind of that kind of goes with what what Shell we were talking about earlier about some two masculine energies coming together. Mm -hmm. That that's not the time for two masculine energy, two masculine oh. dry. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's where he has to deviate into more of a feminine role and pull that down until we come to even kill and that man can start taking control of that situation again. Mm -hmm. Now let's sit down and talk about what was bothering you. I, I think where women get turned off in situations like that is uh, they start disrespecting kind of a man is when she knows he sees that she's bothered with something. And though he doesn't want to talk about it right now, he never comes back to talk about it. Mm. And eventually it starts, a woman is not interested because she still wants to talk about what's going on. She may not need to argue about it, but it's obvious that something bothered her. And it's like, like what Cheryl talked about a little bit more. There needs to be an emotional balance in there to come in and say, sometimes we do have to come down and have these kind of conversations. It's, it's, it's connected to problem solving. Yes, that's right. And being more logical, give him the opportunity to be more analytical, more uh, uh, logical about this situation that maybe I don't see the full, full picture to it. That's all, right. You know, and, um, you know, we just we just do things different. And uh, anybody have any thoughts around that? I think you have to say we're going to talk about this, but we we'll make some ground rules up front. I'm going to allow you to say what you need to say without interrupting you. And the same is true here. No matter where it goes, we make that there to say, I'm not going to interrupt to you while you're speaking. And when you're finished, we're going to do the, the opposite. You don't interrupt me. And I think you bring a certain amount of respect there. Respect. Mm -hmm. That maybe, yeah, you can't be this out here doing what you want. No, no, no. We make an agreement and we're going to stick to the agreement. Mm -hmm. Until we Anybody both say else? what we need to say. Yeah. Anybody else? What are your thoughts around that? I know a lot of us are like little mini lawyers. I know for me, I'm like, I love to <laughs> argue. I, mm -hmm. You know, especially a lot of us women, we just, we just love to argue. Some of us just love to argue. And I'm one of those women, if I, especially if I know I'm right, I know I'm right. So I'm going to start, I'm going I'm to pick a fight and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to prove my point. I'm going to show you and you, you're not going to walk away. Wait a minute. Come back. I, I, I ain't done. I'm not done. And, and, <laughs> and so, like I said, that, yeah. that, 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 that's who I used to be. I am learning yeah. now yes. to, yes. you know, if he says that's enough, that's yeah. enough. Or yeah. not now, yes. you know, I don't like that word. I think growing up, my mom, they spoiled me or something because I was a baby of the six. So I, I think that, you know, hearing no and not now is a trigger for me. Like I'm like, uh-uh, my mama don't tell me no. So you're not going to tell me no. Yeah. But I have to, I, I, I've grown that. Like when, you know, when he says no, it's no. And that, like you were saying, mm -hmm. some of us need to be put in our place. You know, and just say, "Hey, he, you know, he said no. I'm a, I'm a back off. I'm a mm -hmm. come back because when he's ready to talk, when he's ready to open up and be emotional, it's gonna be worth, worth it. It's gonna be worth it. Mm -hmm. That's right. But if we mm -hmm. force it on them and we fight on them and we nag on them, and I want to talk about mm -hmm. it now, it's mm -hmm. not gonna be worth it. You're gonna get, no. you're gonna get the, 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 the crap. You're gonna, you're not gonna get that good, you know, conversation that you're looking for. So. You know, it's just best to 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 follow his lead. If you don't want to talk about it, like Joe was saying, make that that agreement up front. Yeah, we're, I'm gonna say mm -hmm. my piece. You're gonna say your piece, and then we're good. Anything yeah. anything in between that that that's that's irrelevant. We don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. But it, it this all takes time, and that that's yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It, it does. And, and and it's like we're switching roles because that's why I was asking y'all earlier. How many of you feel like you got a lot of the masculine qualities? Yeah. And mm -hmm. how many men feel like they have more of the feminine qualities? And mm -hmm. it's going to take a minute to switch roles with that because uh, men want to make sure to set uh, relational boundaries there also because I am the protector. 
because mm -hmm. I am the provider. I am the watchman. So I'm not going to do anything that allows the family to be torn apart. That's even with our words. So we set up those relational boundaries and a woman feels good about that when that man does that. Mm -hmm. He comes in, yes. he's not, not only just a provider in the house, but he's literally coming in to, you know, say, hey, th that's not the conduct that we bring into this household. You know, little things. It's like us as mother with, with mothers with our children, but that's not our place to do those things with our spouses or with our mates. It's just kind of getting back into your role with femininity and understand the assignment, like Shelly said earlier. Anybody else? And then we'll go to the last one for tonight. <laughs> well, oh, uh, I wanted to, what came to my mind is my brother. My brother and I, we kind of, we learn from each other and the experiences, but um, one thing as far as when it comes down to that and this is something that all women should, I, I've learned because I noticed my brother, he went through it. When he shared an experience that we had as growing up with kids, our parents would argue. And so he said that was one of the things he did not like with our parents. So he was sharing it with his future wife. He was, that was his girlfriend. So when they got married, and so he was trying to express himself, you know, this time to come and say, my brother don't really get very mad or anything, but he, but she was like, oh, no, you're not going to be fussing with me like your parents did. And he, and they kind of just kind of just kind of shut him down. And just different things over the years. So those things like that, when, when a man tells you something out of confidence, you know, thinking that I'm sharing this with you, and then you throw it back in his face, mm -hmm. like, oh, no, you're not. And, and it was more of, his uh, emotional expression of what he was feeling, but then it gets thrown back in your face, it gets thrown back. So he started kind of back telling on sharing his, inti his intimate emotions. He'll contact me before he contacts his wife. He broke and his trust. It broke his trust. And just different things over the years, they've been married 20 years now and they still are, they got ways. I've been praying. <laughs> Lord, I've been praying. But they still hanging in there. And so he's learned different things from me, you know, as far as how to you know, hold your tongue. You need to speak. But then we were like, you need to speak. You need to say something. And but over that, when a man is hurt and he seems like he's not being respected, like respect. but mm -hmm. then that fundamental, that fundamental. The emotional because he do the flowers, the bathtub, all that in the very beginning. All that stuff has been shut down over different times of trying. So when when it comes down to that expression, we got to be able to hear. Okay, we we'll hear what you say, but don't. If you want to say, okay, I recognize something that you're saying that you said you didn't like, but I see that you're starting to do it, there's a way to bring up something where it doesn't seem like you you throwing something back in his face that was confidence and confidence. But but to me, um, I've been in that shoe when it comes down to that, uh, try not to have that masculinity because when it comes down to taking care of being a single mom after, you know, you married for 17 years, but you got to put on those, okay, I got to, change, do things that I normally wouldn't have done, you know, but I still would call on, you know, go get my oil chain somewhere else, something like that. But I can understand when it comes down to, you know, when it comes down to the emotional role, but then also when it comes down to, there's things I had to take care of. I had to get a ladder, climb up, get something out of the attic because I had to do it. And like Marilyn, you said, we had to fix the water heat where well, you had to Google, you had to do what you had to do. And that's me. I won't just, I'll, I'll see if I know somebody, but otherwise I'm gonna figure it out first if mm -hmm. I can do it. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. just sharing that. I love it. And what we're doing tonight is just bringing things to recognition, bringing it to the forefront, mm -hmm. because all month long, we're gonna be dealing with femininity versus masculinity. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always have a saying, you know, that 
uh, we go through that process of, of uh, like the Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi, you paint the fence, you know, <laughs> wax the car. Paint the fence, wax the car. Daniel just want to learn how to fight. We just want to learn how to get beyond this. But Mr. Miyagi is trying to teach him a principle behind it all. And That's sometimes right. you got to give your mind to get out of fight mode and begin mm -hmm. to start thinking about, is this really me? Is this behavior mm -hmm. that I carry? And then you have to lay that thing down so that God can come in and show us a more excellent way. And so our heart begins begins to be open because whatever part uh, really stood out to you tonight, the Holy Ghost not going to let it leave because yes, he's saying, I want to deal with that within you. If there if there's too much masculinity within you, too much femininity within you, um, you got to God's not got God is not um, uh, condemning us for anything, but he's wanting us to get into our proper place in the kingdom in our relationships, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can walk together in unity so that there be no side eyedness in the household or that That's there right. be no, um, you know, feel like you're, you're, you're strangling in the house because we're trying to make a person do something. You know, you want to, you want to allow a person to be led by their own recourse. If anything, let the Holy ghost, you know, bring it to them. Uh, as, as women, we want to be the softer version of it all. And sometimes just present it. Don't fuss about it. Don't argue mm -hmm. about it. Just present it and let people make their decision. It's like, it, to me, it's like salvation. You don't push salvation down a person's throat. You present it to them That's and right. you let them make a choice about it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, sometimes we have to keep doing it. Oh, yes. you know, again, depending on how much you want to put, to, how much time you want to put into it and whether you believe that God is able to make this, you know, switch this thing around, which may cause a lot of work to come from you to mm -hmm. say, okay, I got to keep laying that down. Cherie said something to us last night. She said, women are to be and men are to do. Mm -hmm. We are to be gentle. We are to be humble. We are to be nurturers. We are to be supportive. And men are to do whatever, you know, whatever that doing is covering that home, you know, being that protector, being that provider. And when they're in their position of doing, she will be in her position of being. She will be everything that needs to be. And so mm -hmm. sometimes we got to go back and challenge ourselves to say, all right, Lord, Maybe I am the common denominator with this. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is something that I need to really take a look at in my life so that I can make this relationship better. You're talking about a power couple? To me, that's power. Not about our that's jobs. Right. Not about our mm -hmm. jobs. Not about our finances. It's about how well we can work in unity with one another. And we see differences or whatever can you show empathy in the midst of this yeah, that's right. so we can get this thing right to me when you step on the scene power comes in with you yes. the anointing comes in with you you're able to make change you're able to influence others and it also helps to change the lives of other people as well mm -hmm. amen any last that's comments we got about two minutes left any last comments from anyone I think too Merlin you have to let grace come in and grace will say you know it's like me and you together do i need to really say this that's right is it going to benefit or take away so you have to think about what comes out of you and what kind of effect it's going to have is it going to lift or is it going to tear down then you say well i better not say that especially in the in 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 the moment there's some heat, heated times because that's where you challenge the most. That's right. And that's why you have to let grace come in. We say grace and mercy are new every day. Is it new to you? You have to take that on so you can extend it to others. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I love it, bro. Hello. Anybody else? Well, as you guys can see, y'all are not responding any different than my Dream Builders class did. They were quiet the first two weeks. 
where mm -hmm. we went into vi um, uh, femininity versus masculinity because it opened up a lot. It made us start looking at ourselves and how we were presenting, you know, and more than anything before our father, you know, mm -hmm. am I representing, am I representing what I've gone through or am I representing who you have created me to be? Wow. That's cool. I want to make sure that I represent who you have created me to be and allow you, you know, what he talked about, the uh, bishop talked about the ministry of mercy. Mm -hmm. Let me demonstrate the ministry of mercy and that I don't mm -hmm. always throw off what I've been through. You're not going to be talking to me like that. You know, y'all that kind of stuff. That's what you've been through. Right. And who you are. And sometimes we're acting out on individuals that didn't even do it to us anyway. Yeah. And so we're being, we're being, we're not being authentic in the relationship. I mean, we still got flashbacks from yesterday. And I think before you move into new relationships, you should clear up some of them flashbacks mm -hmm. just in case God wants to do something new in your life. Yes, ma'am, Faith. You know, I really, I really sense that this month. Um, that we're going to be able to sit in this. Mm -hmm. You know, I really think the Holy Spirit is already working, like you yeah. said. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and I truly, and I truly believe that um, some changes are going to be made that need to be made within us, all of us, you know, and do that assessment and everything, but it's mm -hmm. going to be to God's glory. You know, he's going to get the glory out of it. And then we're going to have the testimonies that come out of the changes. As you see, and you're going to just be, oh yeah, I feel that change. Or I see that change I <laughs> yeah. act that way. And you, you're yeah. going to, you know, allow, allow this to sit in us and be able to take some stuff out of us. So. I'm looking forward to um, hearing, you know, all everything that God's going to do this month. I'm really excited about it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I guarantee you it's going to be life changing. And all I'm doing tonight is planting the seed and I'm running out of here tonight. I probably won't be back until the month of May, y'all. And uh, but I've been planting the seeds in all three of the ministries, dream builders uh, in our marriage class, all of that, because we got to get in our rightful place. If you get your foundation right you can build a solid you can build a house on a solid foundation That's but right. if you got cracks in it all of that and you're trying to build a house the house is going to be lopsided you'll constantly have mm -hmm. to keep bringing contractors out try to lift that house back up and sit in the counselor's office all the time but if we'll take a moment to let them let the lord lay this foundation properly as singles i guarantee you on the other side is your answer on the other side. And a lot of it is mm -hmm. if we can just get back into our space where God created us to be, you're going to find out that somebody's been waiting on you. But they're not taking all that masculine stuff you're trying to take over. Not a man of God. Not somebody that really, really wants to be a help, a, a, make, a mate for you. He's not trying to, and she ain't trying that either. We're trying to bring in the best of who we can be all the way around. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Miss Carolyn, I wanted to say something real quick. This is yes, ma'am. Miss Camille, Camille, we can't hear. I think you may have went back out again. Can you hear me, good, Miss Marlon? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. I know um, sometimes when people are single, um, I know sometimes they rush into these relationships, you know, kind of like we were talking about last night, um, just to say that they have a man or just because they don't, um, you know, want to be alone. But a lot of times people get into these relationships and it's just what it is. It's just a relationship or either we're just in here because we're comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. I, I feel like a lot of people got to start realizing that you want to be with someone that you can grow with. Right. We, we want right. to build a foundation together. We want to start building a foundation to the fact that we have general wealth left for our kids when we're no longer here. Um, then yeah. they can pass it down to their kids and so on and so on. Um, especially when you get with someone and you start going through some things and that bedroom starts to get real silent. 
you know, to me, when, when you're single, some people just look to have sex. It's more about, it's, it's more than sex. It's an intimacy thing. Mm -hmm. it, even in marriages, you know, people lose that when, when trust issues start coming about. But if you get to know someone and understand someone and communicate, then you're able to build and grow together and have a total foundation that God has blessed you with and you never, ever expected for it to be. And that's where it comes where we put God first before we get into these relationships, dating people and trying to find people on websites. And just because they look good, they smell good, they, they shoes are clean on their feet. You know what I'm saying? It is more to it than just about money and looking good. It's more to it than you just coming in my house and paying a bill. It's more to it than what you can do for me in the bedroom. So that's, that's just my opinion. We want to start looking for people that we can grow with that we um, just, just that we can build a family together. And every time we do have a conversation or we go through some things that we can communicate and understand where each other is coming from mm -hmm. and it can continue to go to another level. If we have another argument, we're not backtracking to the same thing. We just argue it argued about a week ago we've already moved forward with that that's that's good. Good. amen amen good point that's Camille. Good. good point i think we found one of our speakers for april too mrs camille because <laughs> mrs yeah. camille's got a testimony in her hand and i think that you know, god is really using her in this in this season and i'd love for you guys to really hear um the authenticity of her heart and how um, sometimes jumping the gun will cause a lot of detriment. And now trying to fix things, though God is do doing that, it caused it cost a lot at the beginning yes. of it all. So well, we look forward to coming back together with y'all. And I'm excited. I'm going to be listening to the replay. Y'all just don't know. I'm, I'm the replay girl. I'm up all night long. <laughs> I don't let one replay go by uh, because I am in this thing with us because I'm I'm invested in it. I want to see your lives uh, becoming better. I want mm -hmm. us to get to whatever that desired goal is. If you want to stay single, it's good. You want to be married, it's good. Whatever it is that you want to do, you know, but I want to see you reach your destination and be the best that you can be, you know? And uh, when somebody gets you, they know they got the cream of the crop and they're not going to be able to treat you any kind of way. You know, you, right. came, you came with too much uh, value and, you know, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to it. Well, Mrs. Faith, if you don't mind closing us out in prayer tonight, we'll dismiss and we will move on <clears throat> and be ready for next week. Yes, ma'am, I sure will. Father, we just thank you and give you praise for this day, God. We thank you, God, that... All of us made it on here, healthy, safe, and when our right mind and our hearts are open to hear you tonight. We thank you for all that will hear the replay, and we hope and pray that you will feel the same spirit, the same anointing, the same wisdom that we heard tonight. We thank you for each and every one on this line and cover us and cover our families as we go to and fro tomorrow and on the weekend until we meet again we give god praise and we thank him in jesus name amen amen, amen. good night everyone good night, good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs>